This is Dummy World. in the closet too. Now we're both in the closet. <laughs> Did you ever watch that epic video series about the closet? I mean, no, I couldn't. It was like a saga and I just couldn't. We watched parts of it. We're like, I can't even, why, how? <laughs> how no, did I mean, he get the green so light for this? <laughs> it's so strange. I don't know how he gets the green light for anything. It's, it's crazy. like Kanye West too with some of his videos. I'm like, what happened? Yeah, I don't know why we all treat Kanye West like he's a god. Oh, no, he's lost it. He's lost it. Well, he has a mental illness. And oh, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, I, they're, they're like, I watch the Kardashians sometimes. I mean, they're open about it. Like, he's bipolar and he doesn't take medication. So, I yeah. mean, I think, you know. That would explain pretty much everything. But there doesn't seem to be a lot of people. I personally feel like even though you have a mental illness doesn't mean that you shouldn't be held accountable for your actions. And so I don't know, like, why we kiss Kanye West's ass when he, like, doesn't hold on. need hold on, any, Kelly. like, I- I'm yeah. gonna let I'm going to let you finish. I'm going to let you finish. <laughs> oh, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> exactly like i don't like why do people just allow him to behave this way it's like just... it's money it's money people with money can do whatever the fuck they want people want something from them they think that if they kiss ass they're gonna get a leg up that's it's just money i mean money suppose, and popularity. you know what i guess if i had to interact with kanye west and someone was like if you do this, you're going to make a million dollars. If you just, like, allow Kanye West to feel like he's God for an hour, I'd probably be like, oh, my God, Kanye West, you are God. For a million dollars? Oh, yeah, tell him whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just like, words. Come on, I guess mean anything. Should, exactly. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> so I guess I guess you're right. I could, I could, uh, all right, now I understand why we all kiss Kanye West's ass. <laughs> Uh, hi everybody. This is Demi World. That's Cindy, and that's Kelly. And today, or not today, but this season, we're talking about urban legends, and specifically today, we're talking about cryptozoological, zoological, cryptozoological <laughs> legends. I just been calling them cryptids because that's what. Oh, okay. I like that. Cryptids. That's way easier well, to say. It's not. Yeah, because that's just like what I've seen it referred to a lot online is cryptids. Well, yeah, because it's a mouthful. I would, if I were into Bigfoot, I call myself a cryptid too. I'm a cryptozoologist. <laughs> a zo- zoologist. Is that is <laughs> you know, it's not as bad as the word that I can never say is, um, what's the word where you like project human characteristics or emotions on animal? It's like. Oh, a personification? Anna- no, it's like anamorpha pomop, anamorpha, anamorphosis, anamorpha. Uh, <laughs> I'm looking it up. Anamorph- I guess it would be it would be anamorphic. Anam- it's anamorphic, but there is. Yeah. Oh, it's like Anna. Wait, what's the anthropology? It's like anathro anthro anthropomorphism. Anthropomorphism. Yes. Yes. yes I should have known that anthropomorphism because we learned it together in school but you know what the other word that's really hard to say which came up in my life last week um is a what they call a like the real term for a blood pressure cuff oh okay do you know what it is i don't know what it is it's hard to say it is (laughs) i'm it's like really hard to say i'm looking it up right now i was excited when i knew what phlebotomy was what a phlebotomist was it's a Sphig, sphygmomanometer. Sphygmomanometer? Sphygmomanometer. Yeah. Medical stuff. Medical stuff is weird. Anything with Latin roots is kind of weird. Okay, so today, crypto, crypto, urban legends. So, I fa- I'm just doing one. Okay. Um, because it was pretty intense, oh, all of okay. its weirdness. I mean, it's not even really intense. It's just like everybody who got involved in it and like all the weirdness. So um, I can start if you'd like. Yeah, please do. All right. So 
My crypto urban legend is the Beast of Exmoor. And I actually had to write an actual urban legend for it because there weren't any. It's just like little rumors that run around all over the place and like involvement of different government agencies in it's just crazy to me like all of those stuff that got put into this it's crazy so the beast of exmoor the beast of exmoor roams the moors of england searching for prey a cross between a puma and a panther the beast is more than seven feet long from nose to tail pitch black in color and slunk low to the ground as it hunts while in the moors the main prey of the beast is livestock but when it ventures into populated areas Family pets are its favorite midnight snack. Occasionally, hikers have spied the beast, fishing with its paws like a bear. Okay, so the Beast of Exmoor is a big cat, which is said to roam the fields of Exmoor and Devon and Somer- Exmoor in Devon and Somerset in the UK. And actually this idea of a big cat and when i say big cats i mean like lions and tigers and pumas and oh my oh my (laughs) big cats um which are obviously not native to many places outside of say africa and south america right um it's actually an international urban legend all over the world you will find sightings of big cats, also known as phantom cats. But I'll get into that a little bit more. So specifically, the Beast of Exmoor, the sightings began in the 1970s, but it didn't become notorious until 1983 when a South Molten farmer named Eric Lay claimed to have lost over 100 sheep in three months' time to the beast. And he claimed that all of the sheep that he found had had their throats ripped out and it looked like the predation of a big cat. Um, Probably because some asshole had like a panther for a pet and it got loose. Whoops. Okay. So we're going to get into that too. Okay. So um, there have also been sightings of the beast fishing by the River Barl in Simon's Bath. And if you want an idea of like where all these things are, think of the island of England as a slouchy left-facing sock (laughs) so with a gnarly little toe sticking out the end of it and the gnarly little toe at the end is cornwall and then if you go up the top of the foot are the other areas so they're all kind of concentrated in the top of the the sock and the toe of the sock and um so people say that they've seen this thing fishing with its paws in the river and the daily express which is a tabloid offered a reward for the capture and or slaying of the beast. Um, Basically, any livestock death that is deemed unnatural has been blamed on the beast ever since. So then the government gets involved. And shortly after Eric Lay made this claim that the beast had killed a bunch of his sheep, the Ministry of Agriculture ordered the the Royal Marines to send snipers into the hills of Exmoor to try to shoot the beast. So some Marines claim to have seen the shadowy things slinking around in the tree lines and under bushes, trying to keep cover as if it were a intelligent hunter, but nobody, nobody fired any shots. And part of the reason they didn't shoot at anything is because they were using high powered sniper ammunition that if they had shot something probably would have gone clean through it and damaged anything on the periphery behind it as in more livestock and people and houses and things. So they never fired any shots. Why they didn't give them tranquilizer guns, I have no idea. Give them something maybe a little less destructive. You're not in a war zone. You're looking for a big cat. I mean, come on now. So at about the mid-1990s, the Ministry of Agriculture pulled any kind of backing for looking for this big cat and said that the beast was either a hoax or the sightings were mistaken identifications of native species, but not big cats. Like perhaps a dog, a big dog, dog yeah, like in packs. Bull, like a bull mastiff. Sure. You sure. know, it's like a wild dog, you know, a dog that once a dog like starts hunting like that, they usually don't stop. So it's very possible. It was just a dog. Okay. So, By 1987, 
The beast was connected to over 200 livestock deaths, and in 1995 and in 2001, more attacks were reported. So somewhat recent than the last 20 years or so. So are there any pictures of the beast? Of course there are. There's at least three, which is, I guess, better than some beasts out there. Um, Let's see. The most popular one was printed in the West Somerset Free Press in 1989 and was taken by the Lewis family of Blue Anchor. Don't care. Don't know who they are. Don't care where they live. (laughs) It's just they took the picture and it got printed. And all the images, all three of them, depict a big cat with features of both puma and panther. Now, I've seen the pictures. and I'm looking at I wish, them right now. And I can't tell any features. I'm sorry. They're grainy, blurry, low-res images that could be anything. It's like pictures of... It looks like a cow, sort of, but like, yeah, like, a, long, it, like a longer it does. tail. And like the, the, you know, people keep saying that it's slunk low to the ground and this thing has long legs or it's drinking, you know, it's back is to, and the tail is always weird. The tail is like the straight, like pole sticking out of its back. Like cats don't walk around with their tails straight like that. They curl them, they curl them up. Like, or the grass know. is high. So it looks like they're slinking low to the ground. F, uh, you know, it looks, 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 looks like a, some kind of cattle. I know. It really does. It's a long face. And then in one of them, it's like features like a puma. I'm like, it's looking at the camera with no, there's like no definition of anything happening. It's like, it's got ears. I don't know what to say. <laughs> like, So descriptions from eyewitnesses have the beast ranging from black to tan in color and resembling either a puma or a panther with its length somewhere between four and eight feet long from nose to tail. Eyewitnesses say the beast stands low to the ground and has the ability to leap over six-foot fences. All right, so obviously there's no big cats native to England, and the variation in the description has led many crypto hunters to believe that there's more than one beast roaming around wild out there. So what are some pop possible explanations for this beast. So most experts and scientists believe that the sightings are actually domesticated cat whose size has been greatly exaggerated. I mean, like, greatly exaggerated. Greatly exaggerated. exaggerated. It was this big, huge fishing stories. Another possibility is that eyewitnesses have actually spotted a large dog, not a cat. Um, Attacks on livestock have been attributed to dogs and sometimes humans, which creeps me out. Why would a human do that? Unless they're trying to perpetuate some sort of, I don't know, legend. There's a lot of sickos out there. Cindy. There are. And like, you know, oh, I know. I I say that because I wouldn't do it and I don't get it. But Stop projecting. <laughs> Stop projecting your sanity on insane people. So, yeah, maybe there are serial killers practicing. I don't know. So could they possibly be escaped cat uh, pets? So some people have suggested that because of... When the the legend started, um, they could be large cats that were released into the wild from private collections in the late 70s. So in 1979, the UK passed a law called the Dangerous Wild Animals Act, and it made it illegal to keep dangerous non-native animals in private collections. So the theory is that people started releasing them into the wild. Um, I don't know if that's true. I found no proof that people had released things into the well, wild. Well, who's going to guess what, everyone? Right. I just released my well, illegal kitty cat. No, I mean, the there was no reports of anybody finding oh, okay. anything. Because that would obviously, like, you, if you, if there were a big cat roaming around, say, London you'd fucking know it because yeah. you'd find it. Like right. Nothing has ever been found, obviously. So also within this whole, eh, it doesn't quite work out idea, the age range or the lifespan of a big cat is 12 to 15 years. Okay. So if one did live to maturity and died of old age out in the wild, they would no longer be out there anymore. They'd all be dead. And then there's the idea that, oh, well, it looks like a puma And, you know, a leopard mixed together, maybe it's a hybrid. Well, hybrids are all sterile. 
So if two people did release animals into the wild, one a puma and one a leopard, and those two cats met and had offspring, their offspring would not be, they wouldn't be able to propagate. So the species would die off within one generation because they're all sterile. Mm -hmm. So that idea doesn't really work out either. But I did find some interesting side notes about hybridization, if you'd like to hear them. Yeah, sure. Okay, so there's this guy named Carl Hagenbeck. And Carl Hagenbeck was a wild animal trader who hybridized big cats for zoos and circuses like P.T. Barnum Mm -hmm. and some World Fair exhibits. And it is the idea that those guys have been roaming around because the sightings have been going on since the 1900s. So the idea that people, that there's hybridized cats roaming around England since the 1900s comes from Carl Hagenbeck's cats, even though he did it in like the 1870s. So still, it's like obviously not something that is viable. Um, One cool thing that Hagenbeck did was revolutionized the way animals were kept in zoos. He got rid of cages and had them in enclosures that were closer to what their real habitat would have been like. Mm -hmm. Grass and trees and things like that. So I'll give him props on that one, even though you shouldn't keep big cats. I don't think that's a good idea. Um, In 2016, the British Big Cat Society reported that a Devon farmer discovered a skull on his land that was identified as being a puma. However... Upon closer inspection, it was discovered that it was actually part of a rug. That so that it was just the skull. So it was one of those those ornamental rugs oh, with like the cat's a, head on it. Okay, a real one, like or a skin, like a, fake a skin one. one? A no, real a real one? one because it was oh, a real okay. skull. I see. But gotcha. they could tell from the tooling marks at the back of the skull that it had been removed gotcha, from gotcha. the spinal cord in a you know preparation right. for being decor. Yeah, I mean, you know, bear yeah. skin rugs, yeah, yeah. People tiger do that, so. rugs, people do that. So a little fun fact that I thought was pretty cute was that big cats roaming urban areas are known as phantom cats. Okay. Phantom cats are also referred to as alien big cats or ABCs. Oh. Yeah, that's your little neato burrito fact for today. ABCs are also <laughs> alien cats, alien big cats. This has been another moment with Nito Burrito Corner. <laughs> Nito Burrito Corner. So, I did mention that this was a international phenomenon. So, phantom cat sightings aren't just in Exmoor. They're an international urban legend with sightings of inexplicable and improvable cats across the globe. According to Han, sorry, Jan, Jan Harold Bravant, 2002 Encyclopedia of Urban Legends, the big cats running wild legend is an international staple in urban legends. Mm -hmm. So there's some stable elements within these. The cat is usually black in color. It mutilates livestock um, Mm -hmm. and kills them. It slinks around urban and suburban areas, uh, sometimes feeds on pets and um, is never caught. Mm-hmm. It's only only glimpsed, never caught. So those are the stable elements within this um, urban legend. And those are what stays the same as it migrates from location to location. So within the UK itself, the Beast of Exmoor isn't alone. There's also the Beast of Bodmin Moor in Cornwall and Cotswold, the Cotswold Big Cat. And when I was in my early 20s, I was drinking in in right north of England with a friend of mine and we decided that we didn't want to pay the fare to take a taxi home we were going to walk 15 miles in the dark in the middle of nowhere back to the hotel so as we're walking home it's not one car past us it's pitch black the whole time we're in the middle of nowhere in the country and he starts to get freaked out about a big cat coming to attack us. And I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? And he starts telling me about this big cat. And I'm like, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Big cats aren't out here. Like you don't have big cats. Like what do you, what are you even talking about? Yeah. And that was, like I said, North of London. So not only is it in the, like the toe and the top of the sock area, it's up farther too. Like it's all over the, they need to any place. I think that you have like open area 
people are afraid of these big cats. So Australia has a slew of these legends. They also have phantom, what is it? Phantom, uh, what do they call the guys that jump around on their hind legs and have pouches? Kangaroos. kangaroos. They have phantom kangaroos too, um, which I would have talked more about, but it was pretty just like kangaroos that aren't there. You know, people think they see kangaroos that aren't there. Um, Denmark has the Beast of Fuin. Um, Southern China and Korea have the Maltese Tiger, which is mm-hmm. a blue tiger. Right. The Netherlands has Wenny, the big a big cat allegedly spotted in 2005. New Zealand has sightings of phantom cats since the 1990s. Um, states in the U.S., there's Hawaii, Michigan, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Delaware, North Carolina, all have phantom cats all around the 90s. Um, let's see. Rumors of big cats roaming industrial areas in Luxembourg were reported in 2009. Um, after that, first sighting, sightings came in from across the country, it flooded um, police stations. And then finally, there was a sighting and the police rushed out there and they found a very, very large house cat, but not a big cat. Um, the Western Ghats area of India has the Pogenia, I think I'm saying that right, I know I'm saying it wrong, um, which means the cat that comes and goes as the mist. And so analysis, like why do we have this urban legend of a big cat? Um, obviously there's the releasing, the possibility of releasing animals in, the, in 1979 after the bill was passed that made it illegal. So there's fear of that, but I think there's also this this fear or mistrust of zoos and circuses to not know how to house these big animals correctly because on occasion they do get out like it happened in New York Mm -hmm. there was I think it was the Bronx Zoo these these teenage boys came and antagonized I think it was a tiger for like a week straight and the tiger finally fucking jumped out of that enclosure and mauled one of them to death Mm -hmm. so it's like, well, how safe are we? Can these animals get out? So I think there's this fear. And plus, like, circuses. Like, how safe is it with a traveling circus? How, you know, a train crashes. The animals can get out. Like, is I that... I just didn't even know that there are still circuses. I have to be honest. I didn't even think there was hardly zoos anymore. Yeah, there's definitely zoos. Um, they definitely operate different than when we were kids. You know, it's more like education. I know, yeah, like I know that there's breeding. definitely zoos, but I, I didn't, I thought circuses were sort of, I want to call I it cir- in, cirque, which I, as <laughs> <plural. cirque. laughs> um, I thought cirque had just sort of fallen out of the way, but may, maybe not. I don't know. It's been a long well, time since I've seen a circus come through town. We can travel to Russia and I bet you'd find lots of them there or Bulgaria. Oh, no, yeah, I was thinking more like the United States. Yeah, the United States, not so much anymore. I mean, when I was a kid in Los Angeles, they had the Ringling Brothers had like a permanent tent thing there. Mm-hmm. It was like metal, but it looked like a tent. It was basically an arena. And that's where we would go to see the circus. And they had, like, a large piece of property where all the animals were kept. And it wasn't like they were getting carted around, you know? Right. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they've definitely fallen out of favor. I mean, we have Cirque du Soleil now instead where we watch acrobats. We watch people instead of animals. Right. Um, but, um, yeah, in other countries, it's still a big thing. Right. But, yeah, that was the Beast of Exmoor. You're cryptid. My cryptid. I did an aquatic cryptid. Cool. Um, I actually did a few, but the the main one I'm going to focus on is um, the Loch Ness Monster. Okay. Also called Nessie mm-hmm. um, from Loch Ness, Scotland. And a loch is an arm of the sea. So it's it's narrow. It's partially landlocked. And Loch Ness is connected to the North Sea. And it's one of the UK's deepest lakes. It's 750 feet at its deepest points. Wow. Um, So they're briny. They're salty? Oh, I don't know. I don't think so, actually. I mean, maybe they could be. Maybe a little bit towards the inlet area. Maybe towards the inlet area, but I would probably not. I would guess it's more freshwater. I don't know. Good question, Cindy. 
I know how you feel about water. Water is scary. Water has scary stuff in it. And the scary, scary things can live in the water. So I think it makes sense that there are all sorts of legends about scary things living in the water. So um, the water from in Loch Ness is it's really dark, I guess, from the soil surrounding it. The water itself is really dark. And the monster is said to be elephant or whale size. It has a long and skinny neck with a flat head, big eyes that are on the side of its head. And it's either gray or dark tan. tan. And then it, it has a tail. And there is a debate on the size and length of the tail. So when the Romans invaded Scotland in the year 55, the people there... Wow, it's a long time ago. It's a long time ago. Um, the people there had the indigenous people, they were called Picts, P-I-C-T-S. And they had all sorts of like renderings of different animals. And they were all like animals that you could identify. But there was one elef- there was one animal that they had a depiction of that looked like a swimming elephant. It had flippers for feet. Oh. And so that was thought to be one of the earliest references to the Loch Ness Monster. Okay. Okay. And then in 1565 A.C.E. C.E., right? Yeah, current era. In 1565 C.E., St. Columba, the man who brought Christianity to Scotland. Boo! I know. Boo! Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. Boo! Okay. <laughs> He saved a man in the Loch Ness who was about to be attacked by a giant sea creature by someone named God. And oh, sure he did. Sure, and performing sure he a did. miracle. Mm-hmm. You mean his floaties. He put his floaties on before going out there. <laughs> no, he performed a miracle, Cindy. Oh. And that is what converted all of the heathens to Christianity. Oh, um, my God. That's such bullshit. <laughs> Sorry. I knew you were going to have such a hard time with that. Um, so <laughs> oh, th- my God. No. So mad right now. I know you are. So this is thought to be the first written description of, of the monster. And then, so that's still, like, that's in the 6th century. Um, and wow. so there are occasional reports and sightings here and there of, like, a giant mos- monster in the Loch Ness. Um, in 1934, we have what's known as the surgeon's photograph, which is, like, the probably like the only picture of the Loch Ness monster that we have it's the best known picture it's like what is on every t-shirt and pin that you can buy in Scotland of the Loch Ness um so it's that's an iconic one with like the head coming out of the water yes it's like yeah. iconic one with it. and it has been proven to be a hoax that mm-hmm. was revenge from another hoax so in like 1933 or something Scotland people I don't know someone like hired this well-known like creature hunter or whatever you call some guy like that to Van Helsing exactly to like go and to go and find the Loch Ness and they had like made these these animal prints in the mud from like elephant feet Ah. And they said that it was from the monster. And so, like, the guy, like, the Van Helsing guy was, like, all sorts of pissed that he was, like, duped from this hoax, you know? Like, these people hired him to investigate this thing that they had put, like, the footprints in the mud for him. Oh, really? Oh, that's, yeah. And so he was pissed. And so he, like, his nephew or something, like, made a little, like, a little kind of submarine type thing with a next paper mache neck sticking out of it they took a picture and that was the black that was it that's all they needed um and then in that was 1934 and then there's multiple sightings and possibly like some sonar stuff that picked up like a giant sea creature in the nest um between 1934 and then 1977 there is another picture and it's called like the Loch Ness Muppet picture because it looks just like the 1934 picture exactly but it looks like a Muppet and that's exactly what it was it's like a little Muppet oh how funny (laughs) and so like there are you know people I think still believe that the Loch Ness monster exists and um some people think like it's a old like the last remaining dinosaur you know that's like been living for uh, 1500 years now or 2000 years now or whatever um but I think we can, I just personally think that water, especially dark water, 
can be really deceptive on the eyes and people can really think that they're seeing shit that is not there. Yeah, especially gets foggy up there too. So you've got the fog over the water. You know, you might see some kind of bird out there or something or you hear you hear weird shit too. Like you think it's something like jumping out of the water or surfacing and it's just those playing tricks on you. Exactly. So that's Nessie, as they call the Loch Ness Monster, Nessie. Awesome. Um, And then there's another monster I found in Lake Erie called Bessie. (laughs) Oh. Oh, in Lake Erie? Ooh. Yeah. I've been there. Okay, cool. Um, And so the first sighting was in 1793. It's thought to be snake-like. It's like between 30 and 40 feet. It's kind of grayish in color. And they say it was named after the Davis-Bessie nuclear power plant that's nearby. It was named oh, because it, it probably caused it to form. Well, I don't know. That's what they say. But I think it, if you ask me, it was named after Nessie. I mean, it was like <laughs> named in 1990. So you could say what you want about the Davis Bessie nuclear power plant. But I think Bessie, we can safely say, is named after Nessie. Mm-hmm. And then there's another one called in Lake Tahoe called Tahoe Tessie. <laughs> is there a Tessie nuclear plant nearby? <laughs> I think so. Probably. That seems like the most realistic <laughs> yeah, reason to that's name That's exactly yeah. why it's named mm-hmm. that. No, it yeah. has nothing to do with Nessie and Loch yeah. Monster. No. Mm-hmm. Nope. Nope. Um, and so Tahoe Tessie was first uh, reported being seen in the mid 19th century by Native American tribes in the area. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, the size ranges anywhere from like 10 to 80 feet. And it's snake-like or reptilian-like. It's black or turquoise. And then Ta- Lake Tahoe actually is the world's 10th deepest lake. I didn't know that. It's 1,600, oh, wow. it's 1600 feet deep. Oh, my God. That is deep. That's really deep. That freaks me out just thinking about how I don't like water. That freaks me out. I know. that's And scary things live in the deep, dark water. They do. Um, and then I decided... Uh, to do like a local one because I live I'm not live I'm currently vacationing for the summer I, I summer in Lake Country um and so I summer I me do. and me and Tessie we summer well around here in Lake Mendota which is in Madison um mm-hmm. there is I think it's either called Bazo or Bozo I don't know how you pronounce it um it comes from a native word either from a Pata, Potawatomi tribe or mm-hmm. an Algonquin tribe. And okay. it's supposedly like a harmless water spirit. Um, it was first reported in the 1860s, and it's it's large and serpent-like. And okay. so kind of what I realized with Nessie and Bessie and Tessie and then Bozo or Bazo <laughs> um, is that they're, they're all sort of like, I guess maybe with the exception of the Loch Ness Monster is sort of elephant-like, but the rest are, like, very large serpent-like. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, in these lakes, when you got, like, a log rolling around and it sure. creates waves, it looks like a serpent. Mm-hmm. So this is what I realized researching aquatic cryptids, and I wrote this as an end note to my notes that I wrote for this episode, and I'm just going to read it as I wrote it. Cause okay. Because that's how I felt at the time. <laughs> I don't like cryptids. I am not interested in cryptids. Aquatic cryptids are fucking boring. (laughs) So I started racking my brain for an interesting aquatic cryptid. And I thought, of course, mermaids. Oh my God, yes. But then researching mermaids, they're nothing but bad luck hoodwinkers for men. Fuck that shit. Okay, so I think... That we should do an urban legend based like based on that sort of thing. Misogyny? So, yeah, keeping, keeping women down? So, it's not only just keeping women down, but, like, the idea that a woman, like, there's, there's this, I think it's Lakota, um, tale about the deer woman. Mm-hmm. And the deer woman is a beautiful woman who hangs out near the tree, tree line. And when a man approaches her and propositions propositions her she takes him into the woods and kind of like a succubus right uh, um but not quite like they're not having sex yet she just kills him right and it's the idea that a woman standing off by herself somehow requires a man to come up and make forward comments to her Mm -hmm. like any woman a group of women or a woman by herself is looking for dick right and it's like no don't fucking go talk to her 
just right. leave her alone. She's just fucking standing there. Did you see recently? <laughs> I just saw it like it came across my Google news feed or whatever. There was a judge who was recently admonished in New Jersey because he told a rape victim in his courtroom that she should have closed her legs. <gasps> he asked the victim, how do you fight off a sexual assault? And... Um, you know, he was like, you can fight back, you can call the police, and you can close off your body parts. Wow. Yeah. There was a recently, maybe in the last month or so, a man who was a bus driver. I don't know if it was a school bus, but it was definitely a bus driver who raped a 14-year-old girl, 12 or 14. She is young. She was a minor. And he got off with probation because it was his first offense. Yeah. And it's just like, he raped somebody. He raped a girl. He raped a young girl. And you're just going to give him probation? Like, you got to start raping somewhere. All Might right, as well so, while you're on the job. So I'm going to just throw this out there because I, I mentioned it a couple times last season. I never said the whole story. So my ex-boyfriend tried to fucking kill me. It was his second domestic violence offense. It was his third criminal offense. And he got fucking probation. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Hello, hello. It's wrong. It was I mean, his third criminal offense and his second domestic violence offense, and it was a felony. And he pled guilty to a felony, and in exchange for thank you, sir, so kindly for pleading guilty. For in in exchange, we're going to give you probation. It's bullshit. It's, it is absolute bullshit. I mean, we will lock up people for decades and, and here's decades for what, weed but yeah we just let rapists and wife beaters and because he's white. attempted murderers go because he, they're white and they're, they're white. male and yeah. they're male because he's a white male and he's he's like old he's 20 years older than me and that's he's an old white guy and that's why and yeah. so when i like started getting therapy about it i would i would get therapy at the women's shelter and basically i was told um at the women's shelter that i should be lucky that charges were even ever brought in the first place and basically i was told because i am a privileged white woman that i even got him like it was a big deal that we got a a guilty charge felony charge on this fucking asshole because no one else like everyone else the women's shelter they're mostly like um, minority women like they don't even get charges brought period and so I me who was already like a victim felt bad like felt like because of my privilege that I'm white that I should be lucky that charges were ever even fucking filed who said that to you was it a therapist yep the shitty therapist she's a woman and she's a my own minority I think. yeah but i mean I, still I, she, I that's agree. not her job to judge you i know her she can do that on her own time she right. doesn't do that to you yeah that's fine to say whatever you want to say on your own time but you, she's at fucking work right now yeah like that's not okay yeah she's and like, i mean it yeah. might be true and she could have put it a different way but like you know what i'm really happy that you were able to like bring charges against him we got one more, like, you know what I mean? Just she maybe, she not... maybe, she maybe did say it that way. Yeah, but still, she shamed you. She, she did. She made me feel bad. She victim that... shamed you. She did. She made me feel bad that charges were ever, like, she made me feel like my privilege was the only reason why charges were ever even brought in the first place. And you know what? If that is the case, then the system is far more broken than anybody wants to give it credit for. Right. And it's, you know, it's women of color are victimized like look at the native women they just go missing and nobody gives a shit right murdered and missing and nobody cares yeah wow we really went off track from cryptozoology didn't we well this came from like this stemmed from mermaids. our mermaid discussion yeah yeah they're they're femme fatales they're sirens yeah right women are dangerous must be controlled yeah we're dangerous it's all their fault it. yeah it's all our fault Mm-hmm. All because we know who the father of the baby is. Right. That's what all this stems from. What are you talking about? Oh, like the whole idea of chastity belts and virginity and all that shit has to do with promiscu- promiscuous women right. having control over their bodies and being able to say who fathers their children. Oh, gotcha. So 
like a guy being cuckold. Right. He's like, oh my God, like the child may not be mine. Now I'm fucking insecure all the time because that baby may not be mine. It's like, the baby looks just like you. Fucking shut up. Right. Like, shut up. Right. Like, guys that have no reason to fear these things, fear them. Right. Because women are conniving. Yeah. We're, we're lying. We're liars. Yeah. We're crafty. Yeah. We're witches. Yeah. We bleed and we do not die. Ha ha, fuckers. Oh, scary. Ooh. We are just, scary, everyone. Just remember that. You're right. We are scary. <laughs> Better fucking stay in your lane, bitch. So, yeah, Cindy. So, a couple weeks ago, my mom and I, like, went for a little drive. We're going to go to the library. We're going to get some ice cream. Isn't that a lovely afternoon? Sounds nice. And so, I pulled out on the road, and this guy in, like, an F-150 truck pulls up, like, is like obviously going like at least 10 15 miles over the speed limit flies up behind me and then he's riding my ass so hard i couldn't even like see his headlights and i oh i hate that and i could see that that he was like kind of like making gestures against the steering wheel like clearly he's pissed this slow bitch is in front of me yeah i mean i'm going i'm going doesn't she know who i am i'm going the speed limit so i would just you know but yeah so so he's just riding my ass. And so we get to a point, like, it's only a mile long. We're going to, like, get on the highway, which is, I mean, it's, like, a mile long into town. And so, like, I start to get in the right lane to, like, get on the, the on-ramp for the highway. And he tries, uh, initially he tries to go around me on the right side. And I fucking brake checked him. And he almost hit me. And then he, like, swerved around me on the left side. I flipped him off. He pulled in front of us. And he stopped his fucking car. Oh, God. And I could, like, his windows were, I could see that he was gesturing, but I couldn't see what he was doing because his windows were so tinted. So, like, I'm not, like, getting, I'm not, I'm just, like, sitting there. Like, I stopped my car when he stopped his car because I'm, like, not going to go around him. Like, I'm not going to allow this guy to get back behind me. So, he, like, eventually just gets on the highway and my mom and I, like, take, we, like, go over the bridge of the highway and get on the frontage road and take that into town. Now, when we're driving into town, I see him at the drive through of Taco Bell. Of course. I write down his license. I don't license. know why that seems so appropriate, but of course. Yeah, no, he was in such a rush to get to Taco Bell. And so oh I write God. I write down his license He's plate. He's hangry. I write down his license plate number. And then at that moment, I see a cop is driving by like the other way. So I flag down the cop and we pull the cop over. We tell him what happened. And the cop It's like it was a different jurisdiction. There's like the city that I'm in and then there's like the town. And so this happened in the town and we were like in the city limits. And so they he like went and stopped the guy. But he had to like call the other cop from the different jurisdiction. My mom and I were like this guy is big. I want F-150. We assumed that there was like two or three teenage boys in the car and that they had been drinking. And then the cop comes, like, once the other cop got there from the correct jurisdiction, the other cop comes back to us. It was a guy with his fucking wife and kid in the car. <gasps> oh, my God. My dad used to drive like that. He'd get drunk. And, and he's he played chicken on the road with he, us in the car. Yep. He said that the guy, the cop told, or the guy told the cop that I pulled out in front of him and flipped him off. And that's why he's, that's why he pulled in front of me and stopped his car to flip me back off. And my mom and I just started laughing and laughing. And so I had the option to press charges, but because I don't live here, I'm not fucking coming back from Colorado to go to court to deal with this fucking asshole. And so they just gave him a lecture about safe driving. Wow. And so I feel, don't fuck with me, people, because, I mean, I know, like, there's road rage can be serious, and I know that guys like that can have guns. However, like, I, we were in the town that I grew up in it's 10,000 people and there's always a million cops around and there's always a million people around and that is why like in that situation I I think I behaved the way I did if I was alone if I was like on a farm country road in the middle of nowhere I would have like never like I would have never probably flipped him off I probably would have never break checked him I like would have allowed him to like go around me but because I was like, not in my town, asshole, you know, and I like felt because I do like, you know, it's not good to just be a renegade and like, yes, stand up for what you believe in, but don't get fucking killed over it because these are the kind of assholes that have guns and will fucking shoot you, you know? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're just, they're unhinged most of the time. I, I deal with some really shitty drivers here in California and 
I've been told that the drivers in Portland are just as bad, which makes me very happy because um, they have really bad roads there. So, yay, it'll be even worse. Yeah, but they may not. Well, I was going to say they may not have as many guns as in California, but from... Oh, I don't know. It's pretty It's pretty red. That's what I hear, too. It's yeah. like, and like red and rednecky, like those loggers. Yeah, type. outside, we're going to be in the city, so it shouldn't be too bad. It should be pretty, you know... Yeah, but, but if like you the go log- outside, yeah, you got like log. They're like logger folks up there. They are like lumberjacks, and they like wear flannel, which is they, <laughs> you know that's how we got the grunge. You know, they're all from Seattle. You wear oh, flannel that's right. up yeah, there. Yeah, that's yeah. true. True. So yeah, I mean, yeah. Trying to picture Nirvana as a uh, lumberjacks now, kind of works. Well, they they were kind of you know they were against all of the lumberjacks in their area. Oh, of course, you know of that's course. like the yeah. So anyway, anyway, my point is is that <laughs> fuck you, world. <laughs> I got my power back. <sighs> all right. Well, this is this is Demi World, and I am Kelly, and I'm Cindy, and thanks for listening. This has been Demi World. You can follow us on Facebook at Demiworld Podcast and Twitter at Demiworldcast. You can write us at Demiworldpodcast at Gmail. You can find the cast anywhere podcasts live or at our website, Demiworld.net. And remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for listening.